Hello, movement athletes. Welcome back to another video. My name is Jesse. Today, we'll be talking about handstand progressions for the freestanding handstand, which is a handstand away from a physical aid or the wall. So if you haven't already done so, we have a video on handstand mobility, as well as progressions towards the wall handstand. So if you've already gotten those done, you've mastered the wall handstand, there's a point at which you wanna work away from the wall. If you've gained enough strength, balance, and coordination, time to start moving away from the wall. But as always, you've gotta make sure you can fall or bail properly out of any of the progressions we're about to show you, but we will show you how to enter in and exit. We've got 11 different progressions for you, so stay tuned to check out our 11 progressions for the freestanding handstand. Okay, our first progression for working towards the freestanding handstand will be to develop the shoulders more and work what's called a wall walk. So we'll start on the floor, walk up to the wall, walk back down and end up in what we call a tension bridge, which will target the core and focus on handstand shaping as well. So we'll show you what this looks like. Starting off in the straight arm plank position and then simultaneously walking up the wall and backwards. So as Blake walks up the wall, he walks his hands towards the wall, hits the handstand, then walks forwards. Hands are forwards, feet are downwards. And then once his feet touch, he's gonna continue walking his hands further as far as they can go into the tension bridge. Now you see he's rounded, hollowed, straight arm, straight leg. And we reverse, we'll do it one more time. Walk up the wall, walk back down the wall, and then find the tension bridge. And excellent, good. So what we're doing is practicing movement to and away from the handstand. We're also deviating outside of the open shoulder angle. And we're starting off in what's actually called a closed shoulder angle where there's an angle here and we're working towards opening it up in different planes and then targeting the core. So this is your safe entry and exit and will be very difficult on the shoulders. Probably three or four reps in will be pretty difficult. So that's our first strength progression for working towards the freestanding handstand. Next up, we've got the wall handstand shoulder shrugs. So we've done the shoulder shrugs in a few different positions before. We've done it in the down dog position on the floor, as well as the figure seven handstand on the box. Now we're going to shift it to the wall. So we'll get into the handstand the same way we've been doing. We'll start in the plank position and walk up the wall. Once we're in the handstand, we're going to be relaxing and extending. So the trapezius relax and they're pushing tall scapular coming together and they're going away again when we extend so you can clearly see the move that blake is doing in this vertical plane sagging and extending and then to come out walk forwards walk your legs back down to the ground so that elevation that blake is doing in the handstand is where you want to be in a normal freestanding or wall handstand elevated shoulders nice and tall as possible and this is working on that particular piece Okay, the next strength progression for the handstand here is going to be a wall handstand where we point and flex the feet in an alternating fashion. So we'll begin arriving to the wall handstand like we have been. And Blake's gonna start with two feet flexed and you'll notice he's got a point one and then just keep on alternating them. So really one leg at a time is always away from the wall. He does not have both feet on the wall. He doesn't have both feet in the handstand at the same time. So they're gonna be alternating and you're just practicing this kind of coordination and really multitasking because not only are you in the handstand balancing more, but you've got to coordinate your feet here or one is away from the wall and one is still on the wall for that guidance. So still bridging the gap between being at the wall and working towards moving away from the wall. So that's our third progression here, the wall handstand with pointing and flexing the feet. Fourth up, we've got the shoulder taps and the thigh taps. So we'll get into the wall handstand as we have been. And in an alternating fashion, Blake is gonna to touch the same side shoulder. He's shifting weight onto one arm, tapping that same side shoulder or armpit. And then after this is good, we can start to move into the thigh tap. So with straight arms, he's now shifting weight and tapping lower on his body. Very nice. And then to come out, we reverse the way we went in as we have been. So alternating single arm work here is putting all of the weight or most of the weight on one arm. You know, you're no longer dispersing it over two. You've got to shift your weight to one, keeping a tight body. And really that's going to prep your wrists 
elbows and shoulders to see if they can withstand all of this extra weight. And then shifting your weight well without getting loose in the core and wobbly and piking and changing your shape is another piece to this. The semi, the mid middle upgrade within this progression of going to the thigh now means you have to be on one arm for longer because it takes longer for your hand to travel to your thigh than it did the shoulder. You can also play with the tempo because if you go slower, again, you'll be on one arm for longer, but this will be a significant upgrade in the loading of wrist, elbow, shoulder in the handstand. So that's our fourth upgrade slash progression for the handstand work here. And as we move on to the next set of exercises, we're going to be intermixing the, not only the strength piece, but also the skill components of getting to the handstand and the freestanding form. So we just did a bunch of strength progressions, and now we're going to start work on kicking into the handstand because eventually we want to switch places and kick with our back facing the wall as well. So now we're going to show you what the entry through the T-shape looks like, which will help kicking the handstand. So first we'll show the example. Blake will start off with staggered legs and I'll kick and tip through the T position, which is right here and then we'll return back where we came from, okay? I'll give you a little bit more detail in the next round. So we'll look at another rep. Now notice Blake is already standing straight as if this is a handstand. We'll put one leg out in front. Now he transfers his weight into the front leg and keeps the body straight and he's trying to find horizontal and then returns back where he came from and then puts the weight in the back leg. Very nice. So showing control means you could stop at any point in this. At any point between vertical and horizontal, can you stop and can you return back up? Common errors would be dropping the arms low, maybe bending the hips, getting wobbly, getting loose. So this is addressing the stability for starting to enter into a handstand with good lines and good body shaping. So that's the stand T drill that we have. Okay, next we'll be addressing the bottom portion of kicking the handstand. So we'll assume the pike stand position with straight legs if possible. So Blake has two hands, two legs on the ground, straight legs, straight arms. And from this position, we'll lift one leg up slowly and return it back down. And I think it's a good idea to work both sides just because you want to practice symmetry and not be one-sided with things. Now, if possible, I want to try to keep the hips as squared as they can be. So more so right in this position. And again, that comes from hip mobility or lack of mobility and the hamstring flexibility or lack of flexibility. So this is the pike stand leg raise, we'll call it, which is addressing the bottom portion of when you kick the handstand from the standing position. So notice again, it, this required a lot of hamstring flexibility to get into this position, but it's addressing being inverted and what it feels like to lift your leg up uh, almost overhead all the way if you can and working both sides. One thing that we've realized from training thousands of calisthenics athletes is that if your training is not personalized, it can hinder your progress, leave you injured, stuck, or plateaued. With the movement athlete, instead of having beginner, intermediate, and advanced exercises, we have exercises that'll be tailored specifically to you. It's also important to be well-rounded with your training. For example, some people have really strong legs, they might have weaker arm pulling muscles, or are lacking the shoulder mobility for handstands. You are a unique individual and your levels of strength, mobility, and flexibility are different from everyone else's and your training should reflect that. If you want to build skills, get stronger, and do it in a holistic way that will keep you healthy for years and help reduce injury, you've got to personalize your training. But the reality with personal training is that it can be pretty pricey and it's often not available for what you want. And that's why we created the Movement Athlete Assessment. 